It's indulgent, it's refreshing, it has subtle lemon undertones. Today, we're drinking Much Ado About Muffin. Hi guys, it's Jim here from Dr. Tankenstein with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. On today's episode, we're drinking Much Ado About Muffin, which again is another three quid name. That's it, I bought this beer. Well, I bought the beer for two reasons, let's be honest. I bought it, A, for the name, Much Ado About Muffin. You can't not buy a beer that's called that. Uh, and the second reason, is that it's a blueberry muffin pale ale. And uh, once my eyes had finished rolling back in my head, uh, I thought, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and buy that one. Uh, this beer <laughs> writes a big check. Um, it says that nothing beats a blueberry muffin except, you guessed it, a blueberry muffin beer. Now, let's assume you really like blueberry muffins. I don't think a blueberry muffin beer is gonna quite cut it, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, usually when I buy these beers and I slag them off in this first little section, I'm usually wrong. So much ado about muffin, let's hope that I'm wrong about you too. So like I say, this is a 5.5% ABV blueberry muffin pale ale. Uh, I want to, Maybe I'll put a little counter up as to how many times I say blueberry muffin in this episode. Uh, blueberry muffin pale ale. Again, so typically when you get these pale ales, uh, I usually go off on a little bit of a rant and say flavoured beers should be IPAs or, or maybe I would say a blueberry muffin should be a stout. However, I'm kind of intrigued with this one because when you think about what a blueberry muffin is, you know, it's kind of fruity, um, very it's kind of doughy and, and sweet that might actually lend itself a little bit better to a pale ale. So maybe uh, Siren Bruco here in uh, Much Ado About Muffin have hit the nail on the head. Maybe they've just hit the nail on the head. So a pale ale uh, typically will have a hot float forward flavor. So could be fruity, uh, you know, I guess maybe they, they could balance that out to be almost like a berry hop flavor um, with residual sweetness, but a bready, multi backbone. So maybe, maybe they've hit the nail on the head here. Uh, I can't make any predictions on that because they don't give any information about this beer really up front. I've got no IBU information. I've got no hop information. Uh, I don't even really have any grist information except from the allergens. You know, it contains barley, wheat and oats. So the oats, Maybe we're looking at another kind of hazy pale ale here. I've given up caring on that one. If you want to make your beer hazy, just make it hazy. I'll still drink it. Um, so it's got wheat, barley, oats. Uh, don't know what the hops are. They do, however, go into the adjuncts. So adjuncts, typically, um, if you see the word adjunct, it means anything other than almost like the four big ingredients, water, malt, uh, hops and yeast. So they've added a few extra things here to make that blueberry flavor. Um, chief among them, of course, blueberries. <laughs> they've added blueberries. If they hadn't, I'd be a little bit worried. Uh, lactose, uh, you know, classic lactose brings body and sweetness because it's a sugar that the yeast just can't ferment. It's only as tenth as sweet as sort of table sugar is, but in a beer, you know, with, when you've got a lot going on, that 10% ten, ten sweetness, I guess, stands out quite a lot. Uh, they've added vanilla. So, you know, we're kind of starting to build the picture of a blueberry muffin here. You've got blueberries, vanilla, uh, sweetness, you know, lactose sweetness. Uh, and the final one, classic blueberry muffin ingredient, coriander. Uh, weird, right? But maybe not. So coriander, Obviously, I mean, I wouldn't add coriander to my blueberry muffin, but there's this weird 
thing about coriander and this, this isn't necessarily so much when people make sort of spiced beers and things like that using coriander. Coriander has a high percentage of uh, something called terpenes or terpenols. Um, and what these are are very kind of very highly active flavor chemicals, essential oils almost, if you will. So coriander has a lot of uh, linalool and geraniol which are terpenols, all, linalool, geraniol, you know, the end in all, it's a terpenol. These things are, these, these terpenols are the very compounds that are biotransformed by yeast in an early hop addition. So I've talked a lot about the, the technique of double dry hopping, how when you add hops early on in the fermentation, uh, the yeast can can act upon them and transform some of these compounds. Well, these compounds just happen to be also present in coriander. So what I'm assuming they've done here is added coriander as a non-hop ingredient, but that's high in these terpenols to give a little bit more mouthfeel, to give a little bit more of a resinous, kind of oily, juicy character to the beer. That's what I'm assuming. Let's see if that is in fact what they did with that coriander. Guys, I don't mind admitting when I'm wrong, and in this case, I am wrong. There is no haze in my beer. Now, my beer is cold, um, so if I just give it a little wipe down there, I mean, yeah, it's, the glass is still frosting up, but this is not a hazy beer uh, like I thought it would be. It is, interestingly, a pink beer. Uh, which has kind of knocked me for six, but I suppose if there are blueberries in there, maybe that's kind of carried on, because blueberries aren't really blue, are they? They're kind of purple, I guess. Uh, and maybe that's what this color is. Uh, the other things that are in there, lactose, uh, coriander, uh, vanilla, I wouldn't imagine would give any color to it, so it must be that. And sometimes when you're, sometimes when you're dealing with purple colors, uh, the, the compound family for that uh, is something called an anthocyanin. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a family of naturally occurring dyes. Sometimes those things drop out and you can actually end up, you know, making a, not a beetroot beer, but, um, you know, a strawberry beer, for example, that might end up just the standard golden color. This one is not that. This one is a uh, kind of a purpley color. I've noticed, by the way, when watching these videos back that when I hold the glass up like this, what you see through the camera doesn't quite translate to what I see looking through it this way. So I'm gonna leave it down here so that you can kind of see the, the purple color. Uh, head retention is not great. Uh, it was never really that great. So I'm gonna chalk that one down to a loss, uh, unfortunately for Siren Brew Co here, or Craft, Siren Craft Brew uh, here. The smell. I'm not getting a lot of vanilla or any kind of sweet smells. I'm actually getting a, a touch of the tropical, which again, we don't yet know what that coriander's doing in there. So it could be that. It's very layered. It's interesting. So nothing really, if I'm honest, nothing really jumps out. Um, it's not, like if you're a blueberry muffin fan uh, and you were hoping to get your fix this way, maybe just still go buy the blueberry muffin anyway. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this is bad. So let me walk you through it. Reasonably bitter, which is interesting. Um, but that, yeah, you, you can tell that that lactose is in there to kind of add a little bit of body, a little bit of thickness uh, to this beer, um, so that it so that it kind of feels like you've got something in your mouth, 
uh, which is which is good, especially since, like I say, this isn't hazy, so this isn't like a super thick beer or anything. This is um, this is uh, quite nice. Yeah, it does have, interestingly, um, it does have those lemony undertones that I mentioned uh, at the start of, of, the, of the episode there. Um, those are very much later, so uh, fairly bitter, uh, quite a good body, uh, if I'm honest, uh, quite, quite a good body. Um, a touch of, of sweetness follows up that bit, it kind of washes it away there. Um, Yeah, and with the sweetness, you kind of get that blueberry, but it's not... <laughs> what I was imagining here is something more akin to a blueberry muffin, um, believe it or not, uh, but it's not quite that. It's more blueberry. It's more It's more of a berry flavor. You know how a berry's kind of uh, a little bit, kind of a little bit tart, uh, almost almost watery, kind of, kind of juicy, that's it. it. It's kind of a berry, juice beer rather than a berry muffin beer um, but it's very complex uh, and quite well put together I think okay so the brewery is responsible for this beer I've, I've mentioned uh, Siren Craft Brew uh, already in this but there's also another uh, Norwegian brewery uh, collaborated on this called Levig. Uh, so I'll start with Siren. Siren uh, Craft Brew uh, started in 2013 um, to they want to be the sirens of craft beer uh, in, you know the sirens of Greek mythology would kind of lure sailors into the to the rocks where they would then kill them. I don't think that's what they're trying to do. Uh, they're trying to entice people into uh, into beer and hopefully not the second part. Uh, so Simon Craft Brew uh, started in 2013. In 2015, they won the award for best craft brewer in England, which is pretty cool when you consider the, the competition they have. That's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I, I haven't had many of their beers, if I'm honest. Uh, a lot of the beers that I have had from them have been kind of, uh, I've never just had sort of like a pint from them. You know, it's always been like a, a lemon beer or an orange beer or a blueberry muffin beer. Uh, but I do like them. Uh, they have this kind of cool tattoo-esque artwork, if I can, if I can show you that. Uh, yeah, like, Kind of really cool artwork, and it definitely stands out. And you can definitely, you can definitely pick out a siren can uh, off a shelf, uh, partially because they've always got a massive S on them, as well. The other brain behind this, uh, Lervig of Norway. Uh, I don't really have a lot of information about. If I'm honest, I have had their beers before, um, but they they seem to be. They seem to be a huge brewery, like really, really doing things. They have uh, they have a, a cask conditioning facility, or sorry, a barrel conditioning uh, facility. They're doing pale ales. They're, they're, they're kind of, they've got the any aspect of beer that you can think of, Levig seems to be doing it. So uh, I'm quite excited about that. I'm definitely gonna uh, keep an eye out for them in the future. Okay, let's sum this up then. Let's wrap up Much Ado About Muffin, the uh, the bravely named beer. Um, right, so, first of all, I was shocked by the appearance. Uh, quite a cool colour. This this appearance is kind of, you would expect this more of a, of a kind of a sour beer or a, more of a fruited beer. Um, I really thought there was going to be haze in this. I, I don't know why I'm so thrown by that. But uh, there isn't, and I think that's cool because Hayes would have really sat well with this, but I guess they chose not to do that and, and to sweeten it or to, to, to give it body uh, through the lactose instead. The aroma is, uh, the aroma, right, okay, so that's interesting. So like I always say, now that this has warmed up, the, the aroma is kind of developing a little bit more. Uh, so earlier on I said it was kind of tropical, 
you can now sort of pick out a touch of that coriander. Maybe that's in my head, I don't think it is. Um, it has that lemony note to it, like I mentioned. Uh, and what I mean by the coriander is it's just a, it's a very subtle, just spiciness on the nose. It's not like, it doesn't smell like curry or anything like that. Uh, just a very subtle spiciness. Um, the tropical is there, but it's almost starting to fall apart. Imagine like, a, you know, a rainbow from far away it might just look like a, a blue smudge across the sky. But when you get close, you can start to see the colors. That's kind of what this is. Uh, you can really start to pick out that lemon character, the curry notes, no, the, the coriander, um, and the tropical. I would probably say it's kind of a grapefruity flavor, but they're all very intertwined. It's very hard to pick them all apart. Yeah, and like I said earlier, the, the flavor is very complex. It's all there and it's all at once. It's much like the aroma, actually. Um, first thing that hits you is a, is a nice rounded bitterness that I wasn't expecting, but I'm glad is in a pale ale. You know, this is a this is a real pale ale. It's not it's not a it's not. They didn't just want to make a blueberry beer and think that pale ale would sell it better. Uh, this is a real beer. You know, it, it's just it's got this blueberry muffin character added to it. So first thing that hits you is the bitterness. Uh, the carbonation's kind of gone a little bit here. Uh, maybe I've been yammering on too much about the breweries. Um, but then, it, yeah, after the bitterness, you start to get that juicy blueberry character. Vanilla is one of those weird things. I personally aren't, get, aren't getting a load of vanilla. But vanilla is one of those weird things where maybe the vanilla flavor is lost to sweetness. Maybe it's kind of all coming together here because it is. it does have a residual sweetness to it that I don't think is, is maltiness. It's definitely not malty. I think the vanilla is kind of teeming up with that. Vanilla is one of those strange things where vanilla is not sweet at all, but if you taste something and it's vanilla, you automatically start to think sweet, if that makes sense, uh, because it's in so many muffins and, and cakes and things. So the aroma is is subtly spicy, slightly lemony, under tropical. Um, it's very well bittered. It's, it's definitely a beer. It's juicy blueberry beer um, with a muffin on the side. Whether there's a blueberry muffin beer, that's up to you to decide. Um, I like this, I'll be honest, as with all the beers, I, I slag off up, up front. Uh, I was surprised by this and uh, I wish I hadn't opened my mouth. So, um, I mean, guys, head on down to Morrison's, which is where I, uh, I purchased this beer. Uh, grab yourself a much ado about muffin. Uh, a lot of work went into the name of this beer, at least, uh, if, if not the beer. Um, so grab yourself one of those and let me know what you think. Um, if you have another blueberry muffin beer that you think I would enjoy and you'd like me to try, uh, please let me know uh, about that too. Uh, and if you like this, grab a can, head down to your local bottle shop, tell them that you want a weird fatty beer that's also a very good beer. And maybe they'll point you in that direction. Maybe this is the only one, who knows. In the meantime though guys, cheers. Thank you.